two, and we are now live. Welcome, welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much for being on the show. Uh, Rob, Walker, Tim, Glavin, Sandman uh, from Fox Paintball. Rob is intertwined with Fox Paintball. Rob just put on the Illinois Player Open that just happened in Chicago. Uh, the reason why we're doing this episode is I want to cover the Illinois player open that we were at. Talk a little bit about Fox paintball and talk a little bit about air gun designs because people are wanting to know. And uh, without further ado, Rob, Tim, welcome. Hey, good to be here. Thanks, Brad. Yeah. Thanks, Brad. Uh, let's start with you, Rob, uh, and discuss the uh, event that was just held. Tell, uh, tell them when it was held, where it was held. Go ahead and give us all the info. Uh, the IPO, the Illinois Players Open, was held on uh, June 14th, and uh, it went pretty well. You know, six months of putting it together and kind of pounding Tim a little bit to let us do it and got a yes. He supported it the whole way and it happened. And we actually had a little bit of your help in the background, a lot of your help in the background. So I appreciate that very, very much. Absolutely. Um, had 18 teams show up, um, you know, four pro teams, basically, you know, blast camp, all Americans, far side and uh, fight club. Everybody else was amateurs and, a, I was blown away at the support and I got to thank all the players that showed up because without them, it wouldn't have happened. And it, it was fantastic. It blew me away. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then one of our first comments can, comes from Anthony uh, talking about Tim Montressor. And I know that uh, we've both and all of us have uh, gone through and discussed Tim in great length uh, with our friends. Tim's a great guy. Uh, Tim's personally helped me uh, play paintball, play classic paintball, help with events. Uh, so I, my sympathies go out to his family uh, in this really trying time. And Rob, I know that he helped you a little bit. If you just want to give a brief shout out to Tim. He did. Um, when I thought of doing this in January, the first person I thought of was to call Tim. Um, he always seemed very open, easy to talk to and got a hold of Tim Montressor and he answered immediately. There was no hesitation. And, you know, I asked him his opinion on literally everything, you know, yep. how to price it, how to run it, what to do for prizes, everything. And, you know, I made a post the other day, but literally all he said was make it fun, make it cheap, make people want to come back. And we had several chats about it over the course of the months. And he just, you know, he doesn't know me but he was thrilled to help with another mechanical event going up wherever it went and to be involved. And if it weren't for him, I probably wouldn't have gotten a lot of it. A lot of the ideas and a lot of the way things happen done without Tim Montressor. And that's his, that's just him hundred percent through. Right. Right. So, and it's and it's also one of those things that it's a testament to the man on the outpouring of love and uh, compassion that players have been giving to his teammates, his family. And again, we want to extend our sincerest condolences to the teammates and family of Tim. So absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So going back to the IPO, Rob, um, the real, the, the interesting thing for me was in the time that you put it together, um, because you had months of 
preparation for it. There were times that I know that we've talked on the phone and it's like, do you think that it's going to happen? And I'm, I said, absolutely. Because people, people want this. And that's exactly what Tim, you, your field uh, is perfect for it. It was fantastic. A lot of people uh, were looking at some of the photos and saying that it was more like a movie set. Uh, because they're not used to the tall trees. Can you tell us a little bit about how long you've had the field? Because I know, but not most people know. Uh, tell me a little bit about Fox Paintball. Yeah, well, we started Fox Paintball in uh, 1990. So it's been there for 30 years. Um, and it's always, I mean, obviously we back back then there was, there weren't electronic guns. Right. <laughs> it, was, it was all mechanical. Actually, we were playing with 12 grams. So, um, we weren't even using constant air back then. Uh, but, uh, Fox is on, um, uh, Fox paintball is named Fox paintball because we're along the Fox river. Yep. And, uh, which is, uh, it's a beautiful setting. Um, it's also a nightmare setting, right. um, because we deal with, uh, the Fox river, which, which tends to like to flood sometimes. So, um, so it's pretty cool. We do, we, it, it's it, the total property is about 60 acres. Um, we have that large open area that you, you know, that you, if you're there, um, that you get to, that we have the fields, uh, around it, you know, off of, uh, off of that, uh, large open area. And that area is about eight to nine acres of the, of the roughly 60 acres. Um, and so that's where we do or set up the fields where you can spectate, and watch right from the where you park and safe area and we you know put up the protective netting so um and that's of course that that open area is surrounded by you know a pretty old a pretty old uh forest so yep. um a lot of big tall trees and uh i mean it's a great classic woods ball that's you know that's what fox is all about has really been all about we do do air ball we uh, not to discount air ball we've done air ball um actually for several years we ran uh, during the heyday, we've been there for 30 years. So during the heyday of Airball in the mid 2000s and all that, yep. uh, even through you know after 2010, we still did Airball for quite some time. Ran a couple of Airball fields, pretty strong. Um, we still are gonna, we still are setting up for one Airball field. Um, uh, the field that we set up, the Hyperball field that we set up for uh, the event, was where the Airball field used to be. So we put Hyperball back where that was. Um, what are the re twofold? I mean, it wasn't like we were putting mech hyperball over electronic airball, but, right. um, uh, we can secure the, those, those bunkers better. And that, that area of the field will flood. So, right. As a matter of fact, about a month before the event, that area was about four feet underwater. So, um, hmm. and we had already built the field. <laughs> right. we, had, we had already built the field once. And then everything that was there was gone. Almost everything. I mean, about 80% of the bunkers were actually moved hundreds of yards away. Not just, it wasn't like it feet. just moved, moved, right. moved in three feet. I mean, it carried them over uh, on other acres of the property. Right. Um, and we literally had to go out with teams of people and scavenge and we were trailers and, and uh, a quad and our backhoe and we were we were chasing down the water containers and the uh pieces of bunker and the hyper pipe that had floated away and luckily i actually we get we for once we we got about 98 percent of it back wow. so it was interesting yeah, and and actually the reason we did was because it flooded so high it doesn't normally flood four feet we get a lot of floods on the along the river and it usually floods about a foot and a half yeah at the mo at the most so you know, things flow through, things get wet, it gets muddy, it dries out in a week or two, and we're back playing and fun and fun. This was about four feet deep on the on the field, so it was enough water and enough pressure; it was moving stuff. But right. because it lifted stuff up and it pushed it, it pushed it so far up on the property that it actually it it all got grounded in other <laughs> on other parts of the property. If it had hit about three feet, it depends on the water level. But if it had gotten to that two to three feet, it probably would have not come up so high and a lot of it would have actually washed off the property. So whatever, you, I mean, you can call it luck or, I mean, it's not luck. I mean, the, the fact we got flooded. It hell, but, yeah. Right. The fact that we got flooded in the first place isn't luck, but at least we got all the product and we were able to get it all back and rebuild the field. And 
you know, I mean, the guy, you know, so the guy spent a, you know, it was at least another three days it added just in laying the bunkers back out again, much less all the, the other we time. Had a day, uh, two days of just finding it all. Right, right, right. Yeah. Just to, to get it all back uh, together. So that set us back quite a bit on top of the 10 day delay that we just had to wait because we couldn't even, we, I mean, we were 10 days, we couldn't even get on the property. So um, just waiting for water to recede enough to be able to actually do anything. Yep. And, uh, so, and then, then we couldn't use heavy equipment. You know, we can't, you know, obviously any, any equipment you drive around on, it just tears up everything. So, right. Um, but Hey, you know, we, we, the last couple of weeks, you know, moving into the, to the event, it was, a uh, it was, trust me, I, I think I was, I was a baked potato. I you mean, and if, you if, you, if you'd have wrapped me in tin foil, I mean, I was pretty well cooked from being up on ladders and for the netting and the poles, we had to reset and do everything. So everything had to be redone. All the cabling, all the poles had to be reset. All the cabling had to be redone. Everything everywhere, plus all the other fields on the property, we were trying to get ready to be open. So we weren't just getting ready for right though that field. We were working on um, a lot of the other fields at the same time. So um, and and a lot of other netting. So uh, a lot of other netting, a lot of stuff, and just even just mowing was you know it had become a an issue because you couldn't mow and it kept raining for you know the while. It just, <laughs> you know it keep you know. It, We'd think it'd dry out and then it would rain some more and we'd be like, ah, you know, can't, you know, can't mow because it was getting muddy. So, but we were down there pretty much every single day, seven days a week for, I mean, I was down there every single day for seven days a week for about two months straight, wow. trying to, trying to catch up, you know, and keep up with all the stuff that was happening down there after, you know, you know, cause then the, we had, we were forced closed from COVID. So we closed. March 21st, we were officially shut down and we didn't open back up until actually the 13th, which was the day before the event. Right. So we couldn't even get open by the 6th and 7th. We didn't have enough time by the 6th and 7th from when that flood happened to get all the stuff done. Um, right. I don't know. Nobody, I don't probably know pictures of the bridge, but, but we built a 55 foot long bridge um, to span one of our creeks because that also got washed out and was gone. And we needed the bridge to get to the woods ball field or else nobody was getting to the woods ball field. So you, right. saw, you probably saw the bridge. I walked it. Yeah. I walked so, it. Yes. Yeah. That was our 55 foot monstrosity that we built, but you know, very sturdy. And, uh, and that was built, you know, during that whole, that was all built within the month of leading up to the event. So that was built. The uh, We, it seems like we, we had a lot of stuff prepped and ready to go leading up to that 30 days before the event. And then the, that, and it was really what happened was it was a second flood. There was a minor flood that happened about two weeks prior to that, the major one. And then we, it had all started to dry out. It was all great. We're like, Oh, this is going to be cool. And then it's like, right. Oh, it's and it. And then on a Wednesday, it's like, Oh, it's going to rain. And I'm like, well, okay, we can handle a little bit of rain. And then it rained five inches in, you know, like overnight. Right. And so that, that just, goes somewhere. Yeah. So once, and we would already, it had already rained quite a bit. So the water was already pretty full. And uh, so that caused that nightmare. And then, like you said, but we, hey, you know, I mean, Rob and the team guys and hey, man, everybody came down and, you know, busted their ass <laughs> to get this thing going. And, and, and that was really the, I have to say, that was uh, the event was definitely the, it was definitely the driving force. We were, you know, we wanted to get open to be open to be a paintball field, but we wanted to be open for the event. <laughs> right. right. It was all, it was all about the event. So, yep. I mean, literally the day after the event, I think everybody just collapsed and died for a day. So, right. Uh, right. right. <laughs> because That's we were, true. we were pushing so hard to get everything done and get everything perfect. And I mean, even up until the day before, you know, we had the strangest thing. We were trying to get our compressors lined up to go because we hadn't run everything for a while. Right. So we had one of them up running great. It was running the we and but one is tough to run an event. Right. And and then we had the that other one we brought down and had it all hooked in line. It's a pretty good thing, and it and it wouldn't work. And we, I I mean, I'm pretty good with this stuff, but more mechanically, I'm good with it. And uh, finally, I had a buddy that came down and could, you know, figure it out. But it was, it turns out it was just the, the little hour 
meter. Yep. On the on it was actually shorted. It had got water in it somehow. Interesting. And we couldn't figure that out because it's like, where did you have it? And I'm like, it was sitting in the store. And, right. And so the water, the little hour meter had gotten water and it was shorting across it and driving power back across it right through the ground. So it kept blowing fuses. Right. And we're like, uh, but some guy, you know, one of my, one of a buddy of mine came down and he, he knows how to, you know, he was testing everywhere and we were, you know, we were like, we were testing across everything. And all of a sudden he's like, I've got 120 volts across this negative, you know, a, a ground. I'm like, well, I guess that's not good. And it was just this little timer switch. So, right. but we, but literally that was on Saturday. <laughs> so that's how, you know, right. Yep. Well, that makes sense. Things, yeah. You know, and we were trying to be proactive. We weren't, we were, you know, it just, that's the first time he could get down and test it for us. And, and uh, so we got that fixed and up and running. And we even had a couple more things. One of the pressure switches went out, but luckily we could just plug it. I mean, you know, I, Crazy things just start happening because you haven't run equipment for three months, roughly, and right. uh, stuff starts failing. And but uh, we got it all together, and and I think we, you know, one of the things I always like to do is make sure if guys are coming down to play an event and they got forty five hundred psi tanks that that they're that they're consistently getting over, you know, uh, we did four thousand psi fills. So I think we were yeah. running it. I think I don't think we dropped below forty two or forty three hundred all day. So I didn't I didn't experience it myself. Oh, and I heard nobody complain yeah. anything about the air. Yeah. So like <laughs> yeah. And if you if if you notice that day, I was the one. I mean, I yep. I didn't I didn't do the event. I let those guys run the event. I didn't want to get involved in that politics or that 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 business because you know. Right. Um, I just made sure everybody had 4,500 PSI fills, <laughs> which is, in my opinion, from a field you know, perspective, that's, need it. that's like half the battle, right? Get 4,500 PSI fills. So, yeah. You don't have um, to have Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Air was great all day. Thanks, man. Yeah. It's <laughs> so, true. yeah, made sure we have air going all day. So that's, that's a, it's a big deal. I mean, that's the one complaint. Whenever you hear an event, and we haven't run an event, to be clear, Brad, we, we hadn't run a pretty significant event like this for probably five years now. Right. Um, we'd run some smaller events. We'd run Turkey Ball, yep. which is a three-man, and we do that in November. And, you know, we've been running, you know, say maybe 19, 20 teams for Turkey Ball, um, and we've done that. But we hadn't done that for probably four years, three right. or four years. So we hadn't done a pretty sizable five-man for quite some time. So, And that's always the biggest complaint. The biggest complaint I always hear is, you know, one of the biggest complaints is right. if you're forced to buy paint in an event, it's that the paint sucked. Right. Right. That's usually the number one. If and then air is usually the second one. I was standing in line, you know, and teams aren't making games because right because, because they can't get air fast enough to get out to turn for turned around games. And uh, you know, I mean and ref refing and everything else usually comes in, you know, comes up <laughs> and everybody complains about ref. Right. You know? Right. I mean Every, it doesn't it, matter what about that. Well, if the call doesn't go your way, you're going to complain. So if it goes True. your way, you're, you're not complaining. So there's always True. so fifty percent of the players are always going to be complaining about one of the games. I I didn't hear really any <laughs> complaints. I didn't. No, it, was, really, it was pretty good. And that's your thing. You know, working yeah. air all day. I, I I work in the air. I mean, I I'm seeing everybody walk up. Right. And usually, you know, people, you know, when they're in groups and the teams are walking up and they're getting there, they're going to be like, ah, that you know ref I mean? sucked. That game sucked. That field right. sucked. Right. Yep. And you didn't hear any of it. And yeah. It, and it, I mean, and a lot of people don't really even know who I am. So, I mean, you know, they don't, <laughs> they don't know that I'm the field owner work, you know, doing the air fill station. So right. um, they're just, you know, and, and so, so they'll say stuff. So it's pretty cool. It was good. Like I said, I, I didn't really hear a lot of complaints. So, yeah. um, but really almost, almost none really. So true. I think true. we had a good event. So, so that's Rob. a little bit, sorry, I, I, I got a little bit carried away there, but that's no, it. no, <laughs> it's fantastic. Rob, uh, from your perspective of the event, um, what, what's your rundown, your perspective? You know, I was surprised we got that many teams. I, I, I put up, I told Tim, I wanted to do 20 teams hoping to get 10. Uh, and one named team, you know, one nationally known team. Instead, I got 18 with eight nationally known teams, you know, and it was just fantastic. 
And from there on, you know, during the course of the day, you get the standard things during a tournament, right? And we all expect that. So having said that, there really were no complaints. Um, everybody seemed, you know, that I talked to and even found me and told me they loved the event. They loved the setup. They want us to do another one. Uh, and we want to do another one. We just don't know when yet. Um, I had a couple people message me privately say, hey, can we do this every month? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, hey, if I didn't know, have a life, we got we 18, 18 teams sign up for pre-sign up for five months in a row. We're doing it every month. but <laughs> Right, right. But if they're not going to uh, <laughs> I'd like the, I, I, you know, I took the time I took to put the IPO together. The IPO is an old tournament that Swarm used to do. Am I correct, Tim? Yeah. Yep. And uh, I want to bring it back. And uh, I'm hoping it's a yearly thing about the same time every year. That's what I'd like to do. So it's, it's the IPO itself is a one-off. That's its own event. When we hold others, they'll have other names or similarities, but it's not going to be the IPO. So, you know, we want to do an event for amateurs only. We want to do a 10 man event. We just got to put it all together. You know, talking. Yeah. We got to figure it out. So yeah, yeah. Well, we want to make it uh, controllable and accessible and doable, you know, and make sure we always put on a good show. So that's the thing. You always want to keep it within our, our limits of what we can do. The growth, the growth of the format, the growth of the teams participating, uh, that comes from the growth of the paintball field uh, itself. Tim, a big question that I have is, have you seen um, from your customers on your field this uh love for the mech format where it's very approachable to uh, every player. I don't know if we've, I don't know if we've seen it at, at the field level, customer level quite directly yet. Like okay. not, for, not, not new players yet. I mean, a little bit. Um, it's definitely brought out old school, Yes. You know, OG players, they're kids now. <laughs> you know, I mean, my, you know, I, I, I have a, uh, I have a 24 year old. So, I mean, so the kids are, you know, a lot of people that are, were my age and playing back then are now their kids are older and it's yep. bringing, bringing that definitely back. Um, it, uh, it's been growing, it's been growing a little bit, but it's not grown as, as much as it, as it can. I think right. can, I think it can grow a ton more. I think mechanical, you know, I, I look back when I played and, and whatever. I mean, people can say, oh, that was whatever in the 90s. And and uh, it was all mechanical. But to me, that's the skill of the game. The skill of the game is is movement and gun control. It, you know, and what's happened is, is that modern air ball turned it into rate of fire and lane control. And. I just, you know, two, two different ways to look at it. You know, right. it's, that's still gun control and, con and controlling movement, but it's just from a different perspective. Yep. Um, you know, you, you're, you're a uh, uh, mech and the slowed down rate of fire, you know, allows people to move and yep. play, play the game. Um, and, and I think that's, you know, uh, and then it's not as easy to run and gun with a mechanical gun. It's just not, it's not quite as easy. Uh, maintaining rate of fire isn't as easy. You have to actually pull the trigger. Um, I'm a big, you know, proponent of rate of fire control and keeping guns so that they, you know, you, you know, like with auto mags and stuff, I don't want to build runaway auto mags. I don't want people to use runaway auto mags. Um, you know, I want you to have to pull the trigger to fire the gun. True. And you you got to do it. So there's, you know, the stories of people firing 17 balls a second with mechanical guns or whatever. Sure. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, right. On what planet do they live? You know, so, Correct. Um, you know, and maybe, maybe, I mean, you know, I mean, Superman exists somewhere. Right. So, I mean, you know, I'm sure there's somebody on the planet that can it tw twitch their finger 17 times in a second. Well, um, in the eighties, in the eighties on the AGD VHS, <laughs> you were shooting 13 and you were well, one of the fastest, well, right? We were shooting 12. It, no, it was, it was, it was only at that time we were shooting 18 balls in two seconds. Okay. So, 
So that's only nine shots a second. But yep. that, that was pretty early with the automag. I mean, the trigger pull was like, whatever, 50,000 right. pounds. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Wasn't at all. But it was a pretty, pretty stout pull back then. Yep. Um, and then we started to, you know, we started to realize, or that's when we started to realize, though, um, that you could fire the gun in tenths of seconds. Yep. Because the, the, the chronograph we were using measured the sound pulses, and, and we were measuring tenths of seconds of breaks between the guns. So we knew that 10 balls per second was achievable at that point in time. And that probably beyond was, it's just obviously got to it'd be difficult. You yep. still got, you got to, you know, you, you know, there's got to be some resistance to the trigger. That's the other thing, you know, you've got to, got to keep a resistance to the trigger. Um, there's some devices out there now that are being used and sold to, you know, reduce that resistance. And I said, well, somebody has got to set a standard for this. So hopefully at some point in time, there was a standard going to be set for this. And then, I mean, I hate to say we were, that was being going to be something that was going to be worked on in the future. Um, I'm not sure now with Tim's passing that, 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 that discussion I'm sure is going to be tabled for a little bit. Um, yep. But uh, you know, we're trying to set a standard for that so that, you know, because my thing was, is if, if a one pound trigger pull, which is like a ULT auto mag is, is okay. And then they, they've got these hair triggers that are quarter pound trigger pulls. And I said, well, is, is a 10th of a pound. Okay. Right. Oh, is a thousandth of a pound. Okay. Right. You know, and then it, if it's a millionth of a pound, okay. Cause if we're not going to, you know, if we're not going to control that, we've got to set a standard. So yep. um, hopefully at some point we get something set like that, or, um, you know, we, we established that it, somebody's actually got to pull a trigger. So, and, and they do, I mean, it's out there. It's just, people have different ideas of what that, means everybody's looking to get an advantage nobody can blame right. them innovation drives it and I, absolutely yep. you know it, it's one of those things where i believe that mech at its purest form you know like the mech 5.5 with the non souped up guns right. is perfect for recreational getting people into paintball that's great and i also understand where guys want to push the limits of the technology it's just right. you know guys always want to shoot faster guys will spend money to shoot faster it's right it's just, but we already know that that we already know we went through the arms race i mean right the exactly. 2000s was an arms race and we already know yep. that we can make guns i mean to shoot 40 balls a second i mean correct if, if we want to we can make a gun do that um right. and and basically that's the whole i think in that era we realized that it was point this arms race was pointless right one it was dangerous um for players and two it was pointless because it, it didn't it didn't show skills for anybody and then that's yeah. where the, eventually even the the the, the uh, electronic rate of fire eventually ends back down at ten balls per second. Right. And so so that's why you know a few years back we're all looking at each other go well ten balls per second. I mean that's kind yeah. of the it's not the cap for mechanical. Uh, you know, and and what I mean you know with a legitimate pull. Right. Call it, you know I mean somebody. It's cool. you know, yeah, but ten is reachable and it's really kind of the the the, the mech target zone for 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 it's not a cap but right. 10 is pretty tough to sustain for True. somebody to do that and sustain that consistently and then especially if they're running or moving or something you're not you're not doing that um whereas an electronic i mean ever you can sustain 15 balls a second with electronic guys. easy nothing. 20 right. i mean you know right. whatever your gun's set out to do it's going to do so um so so i think that's where you know i mean i think that's where we want you know one of the head with stuff is keep it at that, you know, at that level and keep mech at that level. And, and I think that's where, I think that's where we're, that's where we're at. So yep. I think the hard part is bringing everybody back down from the speed race with, with speed ball. Yeah. Right. Right. So now we got to get the interest. Right. Of well, getting that out to people. Yeah. Events. Yeah. Getting that out to people, getting the mechanical, that news, like you were asking, you know, out to the the new player, because there's still a lot of the new players. I mean, the thing they're seeing is still, I mean, even a mini, you know, I mean, a mini, which is a pretty popular common gun. I mean, I mean, out of the box, uh, they used to factory set them at 20 BPS. <laughs> right. 
I mean, we'd have to constantly, every gun we opened up and sold, we'd turn it down to 10 miles per second because, you know, they, because they didn't know any better. They'd go to the field and be like, you know, and shooting 20 miles per second. Yeah. Speed sells. It grabs attention and that's what everybody wants. Right. And so now you, you tell people, well, you know, now it's, ten, you know, now our field limit has been, we've never been above 10 miles per second in 30 years. So, uh, okay, I'll define that for open games. Airball, right. General right. admission. For a tournament, we allowed it to be whatever rate was, you know, was, yep. was set for the tournament at the time. But um, but for general admission, we always been, have always been 10 BPS for none. So, um, so it plays into it. You know, I even had a guy today, a guy came in the store and he was like, ah, well, I've got as a tip, man, I'm never going to survive against those guys. And I'm like, well, our rate of fire is 10 balls per second. And I said, yeah, it's a lot easier for an electronic guy to sustain 10 BPS. But, you know, you got your, you know, Tipman can still get up to seven or eight pretty, pretty easy. Most people can yep. do seven or eight. Anybody can do that with a, yep. even with a Tipman. So I said, yeah. don't, don't let it get in your head that you can't. I go, you, if you pop, you, you pop your head out and shoot your gun back at that guy. He's going to duck back in. Right. <laughs> so, so uh, well, that's, you know, that's part of what we're trying to bring back. Right. And that's the thought pattern that has disappeared. Right. Even yeah. the mag or cocker, you know, these, these the younger generation doesn't know them. Right. So well, every, everybody thinks they're outgunned against the electronic guns. And now we're trying to let people know that now you're you're not you're, you're not really outgunned. I mean, uh, skill right. can can achieve beyond that. And then the electronic guns are capped. And so they can have their two thousand dollar golden missile paintball gun. But it's still only going to shoot 10 BPS. So. Yep. Well, it's the player that makes the marker, not the marker that makes the player. Absolutely. That's true. So we want to, you know, we definitely want to keep. So, so getting that message out to mechanical players, hey, you can buy these guns, and then especially now with the new guns that are out. I mean, obviously, uh, auto mags are plentiful in the used marketplace. The you know that secondary marketplace for used stuff, they're all over the place, and uh, new guns are going to be available pretty soon. Um, but uh, those are all over the place out there. Obviously, any autocockers, Tipmans, stuff. You know, there's a lot of stuff out there for people to to use and play with. One thing that I've been wanting to talk about and discuss for a very long time it touches the AGD side of things. So, Rob, you're going to uh, contribute on this one. But one piece of tech that I don't feel gets enough attention. Um, Rob already knows what's coming because this is like my mantra. Mm -hmm. um, one piece of tech that Aragon has uh, is the level 10 bolt. Um, right. When I was going to do a show with Tom, we were going to discuss it. I'm going to discuss it with you um, because I've actually been at events where my team who was shooting all level tens were the only team able to get bad paint out of their guns. And we won events because of it. Right. Why don't people understand the level 10 as much as they should? Well, wait, I guess, what do you mean by don't understand? Um, I don't think enough people know the level 10 exists. So let me, let me start out by saying, Tim, how do you explain the level 10 bolt system okay. to those who don't know? Okay. Well, if you go back to the original 68 auto mag, that bolt system that was on there ended at level seven, what we right. call a level seven bolt. Um, and, and basically that bolt, as the basic operation of automag, it's, it's held back by a sear. There's an air chamber behind it. You drop the sear, that air chamber unleashes the gas, throws that bolt forward. And it, it basically pushes the, pushes the ball forward, fires it down the barrel. Um, it does it without any inhibition <laughs> yes we'll, we'll call it um, nothing can, nothing is stopping stopping that yes it will slaughter whatever is in front of it no matter what is there um and therefore you know from a level seven standpoint that's where uh, the device is like a power feeds you know agd designed the cross feed the power feed to the gun so um and this was all an attempt to keep the energy of what we call the popcorn effect 
yep. uh, of if you if you took an original auto mag with a straight feed tube and you'd stack two balls in it, one in the barrel, one in the feed tube and shot it, the second one flies out. Flies out, yep. So um, short of, you know, so you could lessen that by stacking a hopper, keeping your hopper full of paint, a lot of weight, keeping on it, it slowed it down. So you wouldn't break as much paint when your hopper was full. But if you got to an end of your hopper, last 10 shots or something, there's a good chance you broke a ball because that popcorn effect just kept the paint popping out. So yep. uh, I mean, uh, the old tongue, the old tongue video, huh? Um, yes. Continue. So, I'm just queuing this up ready. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so ultimately what, you know, Tom did was he, in, in, in all of Tom's, uh, uh, greatness and ideas of what he came up with the auto mag. I mean, he came up with a bolt system that would, uh, essentially, um, bounce off the paintball is essentially what it's doing. Um, and, uh, it does that. Uh, it, it, it takes a little more gas. It, it's less gas efficient than a level seven gun. Um, but essentially what a level 10 bolt does is it's constantly venting. So there's a the stem in, the, in a level seven is solid. The, the, the bolt stem that seals in the power tube on the O-ring, it's solid. In a level 10, there's a hole through the center of that stem. And all the way up the bolt towards the three quarters of the way up is a little hole. So gas, as it's coming, is venting out that hole mm -hmm. uh, as it's firing. And basically, the, the ability of uh, – and, and you can obviously put it to an extreme point where it, it could theoretically bounce off your tongue. But True. I, would, I wouldn't recommend that with a lot, ever with a level <laughs> 10. Right. right. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. So um, Let's do but, it. Uh, uh, yes. It's, and it's – well, it's, a, it's adjustable in the sense that um, – you you can't control the vent per se. You can a little bit. You can right. con you can control the vent a little bit with shims or shims. shims for the I was just going to say the shims. Yep. And you can control it a little bit, but you can't really. That, that's the shims are not really meant to control the venting per se. Um, yep. They're, they're to, the, the shims are to accommodate differences in setups and guns to stop bolt stick. So, yep. um, but uh, uh, what happens is that that bolt is always venting. And then you put a pretty good mainspring in front of it. And what happens is, is if the vent exceeds the energy of the bolt to fly forward, then the bolt will stop. Right. So if it encounters, if, if the ball gets pushed forward and is moving forward in the barrel without any obstruction, then the vent doesn't, it, the vent doesn't exceed it. It continues to follow through and fire the ball. Um, if the, if, if the, if the bolt is slowed down, by an obstruction, such as a ball being halfway in the breach or whatever, something else, it slows that bolt down. Then the vent keeps venting gas until the energy of the bolt is 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 ex the energy of the bolt moving forward is exceeded by the spring that's that it's pushing against. Then it resets, so, and then it causes it to reset. Yeah. So so that's kind of in it really quickly what a, what the level then does. The bolt the, the bolt is always venting, always. The, yep. the minute you fire, it's venting. Um, and if that vent or the amount of vent, if it vents enough air before it can fire the ball, then it will reset. Yep. And, and, and things that slow the bolt down, such as an obstruction, will cause it to vent more. Well, it's just timing. It's, it slows it down. So that, that vent slows it down. And then yep. you can adjust it with the spring. So if you put a harder spring in, right. a stronger spring, like we, we, we give the gun away with a gold and a, and a red spring. Um, I shoot four star with a gold spring. So typically the red spring is just a stronger spring. So it slows the bolt down even more, causes the vent to, it vents more. So yep. then it becomes more reactive to any obstruction. It, it, it resets easier. Yep. So a red spring would be for more brittle paint. Um, usually the gold spring you can set up and shoot just about anything. Any recreational grade on gold spring is fine. I mean, you get up into brittle four star, five star, you'd have to put a, you know, probably a red spring on the gun or else it's just going to, it's not going to vent fast enough. It's just going to, it'll chop it just like it normally does. Yeah. So it makes sense. And it, it's just one of those things that a lot of people in the mech movement that I see out there are trying to shoot their gun out shooting their hop or half stroking, chopping paint 
all of those things, every right. single one of them is eliminated by an air gun designs product. And I mean, that's just, yeah, it's I mean, fantastic. for a mechanical gun, it, it definitely, I mean, it, it, it certainly, it does work. I mean, it, it certainly does work. So um, it, if it, it can be adjusted wrong um, to some extent, I mean, uh, the level 10 bolt, it, it adds a little bit, a level of complexity um, because now the power tube ring that was once just set in the bottom of your right. power tube and, and the, the piston just stuck and sealed yep. on it. It sealed it or it didn't. Right. Now the, the, the power tube O-ring is actually placed in a, what's called a carrier. So it's floating. Well, yeah, in essence, it's floating and, and the carriers come in different sizes and that's to, because the stem on the level 10 is, is thin and more precise. And it's got a seal around that stem versus just at the base of the stem, like the level seven was. Yep. And um, and obviously, it's it's got to have enough uh, it's got to have enough energy to move that bolt, but move freely and still seal while it's moving on that that stem. So there's a lot going on there. It's very precise as to how it wants to be. So there, in the past, we've made up to eleven different carrier sizes for that power tube bow ring. Yeah. Um, we give six away now with the bolt. Um, and that covers generally most. You, you generally get down to where you use about two sizes, or, or where it generally comes down to. If you're using R O rings, so yep. the reason the reason for the different sizes is that we take one O ring, one O ring size, and we can resize that O ring now eleven different times with the with the carriers. Yep. So if anybody's ever wondering how you know precise you can be, well, it it, it is it's the same O ring but we're changing its size 11 different 11 times, times. Yep. to get it to be as precise as we need to be. And once you get there, once, you know, there's some deviation, there's, there's always deviation, uh, you know, and it's, 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 the deviation goes below thousands of an inch though. So yep. most of the time we're measuring in thousands and then we're, we're, we're going down to 10 thousands with carriers. So um, uh, once you get to that deviation and find it though, it usually, once you find out where you need to be and you know where your gun range generally exists, um, you're there, you find it and you can, you know, you can stick with the carrier sizes that you're used to, but it, it is, an, uh, it's a, it's a cool or unique feature because you can actually, if you wear that O ring out with one carrier and you have a size smaller, you can actually just take that same O ring out that's worn out in one carrier, put it in another smaller carrier and the O ring becomes available to be used again. Yeah. So, Get you some longevity and, and and that's like I said that's that's once you learn that the the little bit of nuances of the level 10 you, you're like oh this is really simple and yeah. it becomes easy and then it, it, it really helps you get out there and play a lot faster and easier that's true that's true the level 10 is a mechanical anti-chop simply right. put yeah it's a right. mechanical anti-chop yep true. and it works works pretty well <laughs> it does it does i uh, Yes. Yes, it does. Oh, yes, Rob, uh, what have people been saying about coming out and practicing? Because that's usually a good thing at Fox. I know that you're trying to get practices, maybe do some 10 man. Why don't you tell me what you're thinking about? Because other people want to know. Um, yeah, never really discussed it with Tim, but I'd love to have. <laughs> Come out uh, and practice. <laughs> Come on out. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I'd love to have like one practice a month down there where everybody knows that whatever particular Sunday Fox is having a practice, everybody can come down that day and do that. We have not, we're all still catching up from everything that led up to the event. Yeah. So we haven't had a lot of time to talk about setting that up that way. Right. You know, uh, ICPL or ICC's coming up, I would love to have one, you know, a couple weeks before that, you know, in the next couple weeks. Who are some of uh, the teams that uh, frequent Fox for the classic or that you would consider that they would be coming to Fox to practice? Who are some of those teams? X-Men, Thunderstruck, Fight Club, um, Probably prime suspects. They they showed great interest in it. Jamie Connolly and the guys. Yep. Uh, Jamie frequents our field often anyway. Um, he's kind of a monthly regular, at least yep. once, twice a month. 
um, things come down. We've, we've said we'd go do the same thing, you know, yep. for teams. You know, you ask them to come to you, you should go to them sometimes too. So we're trying to get that all put together. And I, you know, practice is always available there. Where Usually are the Sunday's prime suspects practice. from? Minnesota. Aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, they might be from southern Minnesota uh, that I don't know, but not in the they're Twin up, Cities area, but that's... about four or five hours away. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah. Yep, they have to be. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Prime suspects, I apologize. I need to learn uh, about you, so reach out to me because I want to uh, get to know where you guys are and from, and if they have a field, that's even better. Now, uh, now that we've discussed uh, potential events, the ICPL is scheduled uh, to happen at the Badlands. That's a 10-man and a 5-man. Do you see um, converting any of the fields to 10-man? Have you tried playing 10-man on the hyperball field? Have you tried playing 10-man in the woods? We did, actually. Uh, we had a kind of a closed practice a few the two weeks before we had the event. Just to see with the X-Men, Thunderstruck, uh, they all came down. And the fields were built to beat 10-man. Uh, they need a few more bunkers, but they are legit 10-man size. Uh, the hyperball field, I looked it up on NPPL rules because it's the only place I could find it. I looked everywhere. And, uh, you know, their, their rules say 200 long by 160 wide, and we're 155 wide. Yep. Because of the trees on the river. So we're legit. Yep. Um, the woods ball field, you know, every field is different, but we did set it up size to play 10 man. And uh, it's big enough to play 10 man. And we did on both. And yeah, both fields. Just need a few more okay for, 10. for 10 man. Yeah. You know, Renix fields are pretty big. And so are ICC fields. They're pretty yeah. big. Yeah. True. Um, that's cool. Ours seems small in comparison, but they're legal size. I mean, yeah. I've done my check. We worked hard to make everything legit and well, I what it should be. I haven't or read if there's like a maximum. I mean, I don't know if there's – I mean, it's got to be a minimum or is there a maximum or is it doesn't really matter. I haven't looked into that, so there's a – Jonathan, Jonathan was sounding off really and, and said, who won the event? Uh we haven't discussed that. I, I know uh, that the gunfighters took first, correct? Yep. Rob Rob sure. Froze. Yep. Rob right. Froze with the right. with the info froze. there. Uh so Jonathan, I believe it was gunfighters who took first. Far side, I believe, took second. Uh prime suspects were yeah. in there. I don't know if they were third or know, it's pretty bad. Yeah, I, I can't recall either. I and uh I think Thunderstruck was third and Prime Suspects were fourth. I'm sorry, guys, if I don't have it. And if Rob didn't freeze, uh yeah, he would be able to fill that in. So <laughs> yeah. I don't have it. it. And it's too bad. I I don't know. I knew Gunfight was one. I was a yep. You know. Yep. And that's, and it, yeah, the other people are disgruntled goats and that's just how it works, but everybody had a great time. And that's one of the things that I, you know, going to events and hearing the things and having people talk and whatever, I didn't hear any, any complaints. People were happy to be out. Um, people are sick of the lockdown and wanted to have a good, uh, time with good friends and thank you very much, Tim, for having it at Fox. I, yeah. uh, I'm glad that it, that it went the way that it did. Um, because yeah. it, sh it showcased the field. It showcased what can happen when people, uh, work together. And it's just one of those things that, uh, many people have told me how, uh, how impressed they were at the event. So that's a great yeah. thing. Well, that's cool. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, I always say Fox is pretty, you know, we're, we're a pretty basic paintball field. I mean, we're a classic woods ball paintball field. Some airball, but you know we're traditional, 
traditional what we call tailgate paintball, which is, you know, when I started playing, um, I mean, I started playing really in 1988. Uh, uh, I bought my first paintball gun in 1986, but I didn't really seriously start playing until 88. Um, and that's, you know, that's what we wanted out of a field. We wanted to go and hang out, play paintball and, uh, what we call tailgate, you know, we, we can cook yeah. out, cook out and eat food and stuff. We don't allow alcohol while people are playing. Right. Can't, can't do alcohol while you're playing, but, uh, um, but, uh, but that was the thing. It was a thing for people to hang out and do stuff. And, and, uh, uh, that's what we, you know, classic tailgate paintball. That's what, that's what Fox paintball is all about, you know, coming yeah. out and hanging out and having a good time with your buds. I mean, and Rob, when we got cut off, uh, we somebody asked Jonathan asked uh, about the final finishes. I had gunfighters at first, uh, Farside at second, Thunderstruck at third. Yes, and then Usual Suspects at fourth. Prime Suspects. Prime Suspects. I'm prime sorry. Two. Prime Suspects. <laughs> prime <laughs> suspects <laughs> actually was uh, fourth. Yeah. Okay. Good, good. Perfect. So yeah, that, Jonathan, that's your, uh, your rundown. Um, and yeah. it, it's one of those things that it was great. Uh, the feedback from the players, the feedback from the teams, you guys coming together and making it happen. I was just telling Tim, I thanked him, but I also want to thank you. Um, because I know how, I know how stressful, how stressful and crazy it can be and how sometimes it just feels that you're chasing your own tail, but it was a great event and thank you for putting it on. Yeah. Well, you're welcome. It was, it was a, now I can say this after the fact, it was a very much of a pleasure to do it. And now the next one's going to be a lot easier to put together. We know yep. what we're doing. We're going to grind. You know, everything is kind of in place at this point. You know, having a flood three weeks before the event, washing everything out and having to rebuild both fields literally didn't help. But yeah. now it's all so. Rob, did you, where is it? Somebody was asking to you where, uh, where, where was like a synopsis of posting of the event? Where did you end up doing that off of? Just the team five side? Uh, Team Fox, <laughs> Illinois yeah. Facebook page. I'm still trying to find some videos, some pictures, things like that, because I didn't take any. I was too busy with other things, and so is the rest of the team. So I'm yeah, trying we, to pull things from people and use them. Yeah. So we haven't quite yeah, we put it together have, yet. So it Jaws that. was out there. Uh, Jaws photography was out there. I know that I was going to have a photographer out there um, from Spartan, a regional guy from there, but he had like a family emergency, which was tragic and uh, he couldn't make it. I took some photos. I took some video. I, I have some stuff out there uh, that I'll definitely send yeah, Brad, where is it? Send it yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So we we kind of dropped the ball. We, we did sort of drop the ball on our own side because we, for you know, we make that assumption that there's going to be a bunch of people shooting pictures and doing video. We do have some. Uh, Connor Downham was out there doing some stuff on video, and I know he's got some pictures and stuff, and he's been busy since the event. So he hasn't had, he's been traveling and he hasn't had a chance to get it together to get to us either. So hopefully we'll get a little bit better synopsis and, you know, some something and and rob should you know i mean i mean your event you uh you should write a synopsis of the event so we can post that up maybe so um you know and, and get everything out there i know our website as far as our facebook page fox paintball's website and facebook page was pretty uh um uh pretty non-existent with the tournament information and that's just because we just i just didn't have time to keep up with it um yeah. i i have my I have a lot of irons and a lot of things going on in paintball and uh, updating my own website seemed to be one of the irons I was just willing to, to let go. So um, hopefully we'll do a better job next time of assigning somebody to be in charge of that, which is what we kind of failed to do. We just didn't put anybody specifically in charge of our side of the media 
Yep. Um, and we were hoping or, you know, we kind of were just relying that we would depend on like you, Brad, to, you know, yep. which we shouldn't. I mean, you know, you've got your own, you know, everybody has their own agenda. And we just, yep. um, and I'm sure right now we're, we, we have, I put a few words out to try to, to get a smattering of some stuff from people. But, um, and there was a photography service down there for prime suspects. I can't, sorry, yep. I can't remember her name, but um, yep. she took some absolutely fantastic pictures for the, for the team. <laughs> Um, they're all dedicated to the, that team. Uh, uh, yep. If we run another event, I would like to have her come back and take pictures for the everybody for the whole event. So yep. um, maybe we'll do that. And I I forget her name. So um, for the photography, it's okay. Apologies. It's okay. She knows. Um, she knows she's welcome back. And that's yeah. Uh, so uh, so hopefully that's cool. We could we could do that. So yeah. Um, and I, I, I somebody was asking about the All Americans, and uh, I hope the All Americans had a good time. I hope they, I hope they came and had a good time. So they did. They did. I hope they had a good time, and I hope they didn't feel. I mean, I mean, they, you know, they got beat. I mean, I, I can't really, you know, I mean, a, a pro national team comes and shows up to a small, what seems to be a small local event, and they get, they don't even, they don't make podium. I mean, I'm hoping that they had a good time and that uh, that they walked away with the more the impression of, hmm, maybe we can't take this place for granted <laughs> right. next right. time. Yeah, I had a special not, couple not, times. Yeah, not that they took it for granted. Maybe they, I don't know what they did, but I'm just they, at least they have walked away with a little respect for some of our teams, our local teams, that that they're not uh, that we've got some good players in the area. So because <laughs> we do. <laughs> we've got some good football players. True. Such a few times he they all made sure I knew that the field looked great. They love the atmosphere. They were there for the practice the day before. And, yeah, you know, they, they said it was a good event. And that that's what makes it special also. You know, when you when you put on a first event in a very long time and somebody of that caliber says you did a good job overall, that that's a pretty good pat on the back. That felt good. Yeah. And we'll get better. I mean, we'll get better. We always are going to improve. I mean, we've done events for, I mean, technically we, you know, we, you can go back to the time period we we've done a lot of events. So we used to, right. the, the CPSA we used to run fifty five teams. True. At once on the field. Uh, yep. So um, back in the day, I mean, we we could do a lot of teams. So it's really that it's just getting back to it. It's getting back into it. That those days went away, and then now we're we'd like to see that build back and love to see it come back to. I mean, I don't know, 55 teams, I'd probably pull my hair out, but. Right. Um, <laughs> it looked, uh, oh, <laughs> Rob, yeah, Rob, Rob already beat me to it. But, right. I, I was going to take it. I was going to take it, but I pulled up short. I pulled up short. Rob's run a few of those 50 teams. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so hopefully we get, we would get, you know, I mean, I'd like to see us get back to running, a, you know, definitely a, sm a smattering, you know, five man, 10 man, even getting back into doing some three man stuff and, those novice events to get people three mans three mans are what get people to try tournament yes. paintball. It's and, true. Uh, five man, you know, is a little bit tougher because you got two more people to decide what to do with. You know, I always ask, you know, people are like three man. I'm like, yeah, it's left, right, center. You know, right. there's nothing to think about. You just, you know, that's it. You know, yep. Five man, you got two more guys to decide what to do with, and then of course ten man, you got you got a Not whole more. bunch of people to decide what to do with. Right. So. Um, <laughs> gets it gets it much much harder to play so hopefully we'll get back to doing that stuff so um all of it you know i mean that'd be the you know the you know the great thing so the fields you know we're we're on track with you know getting things back you know going you know keeping things going at the field so um you know, we're we've got a lot more work to do we're going to keep doing more work and see what we can keep doing so uh perfect you know, keep adding and and uh keep building that back there so we're definitely going to keep working at the field to to keep things going and make it better. Um, I'm sure uh, uh, Rob is, is always going to keep working too. So, yep. I mean, it's, 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 you know, I, 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 he, he, he bugged me a lot. So <laughs> I did. He, I he was on you more this year in the last 25 years, man. Yeah. He, you know, he, he, he was finally, he was finally surprised after a while when I started answering his phone calls. So, Persistence. Persistence. Yeah. I was surprised I was getting yeses is what it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You could do that, Rob. Oh, great. You know, so yeah, no, it, it's good. It worked out really good. So 
So in closing, Tim, please tell everyone the name and city of Fox Paintball. Okay, well, it, it is it's Fox Paintball. We're, we are, uh, our address is listed as a Newark address, so Newark, Illinois. Um, the, you know, we're foxpaintball.com. Yep. Um, we are, uh, location-wise, we are uh, uh, southwest of Chicago um, by about 55 miles from the city. So uh, from, you know, western suburbs, south suburbs, areas where, uh, you know, half hour, 45 minutes for most people to get to us. If you're far west suburbs, you know, we might be a, a little bit closer. If you're north, it, it's a little bit of a drive to get to us. But, you know, pretty much most people can get to us within an hour from most Chicagoland areas so um and that's that's you know pretty straightforward to get to us perfect and from airgun designs perspective um open for business servicing guns having products anything new <laughs> on the horizon that you choose to tip your hat to yeah i mean um we have i mean and i say we i don't know, you know me um uh, Aragon Designs is uh, consists of myself and uh, some other, a few handful of some of my guys that help help me out. Um, I, I, we are definitely uh, getting getting ourselves back on track. Uh, guns have been offline for a few months now, several months. Um, we finally have all parts back in. Uh, Dave Zupan is the other guy behind the scenes. He's he's the manufacturer side. He's the guy that gets all the parts. He's the guy that gets everything made. So he's the real key to getting everything for air gun for all the guns. Um, I sell the stuff. Uh, yep. Dave makes all the stuff. So, um, and we finally have gotten hooked up with getting pretty much everything, you know, back and made. Um, it's really for anything new right now that, that it's, it's tough. Um, we're struggling just to keep up with the current product. So yep. we're still making all the parts for the 68 auto mag too. So, we're making parts for, you know, a, a 25 year or 30 year old gun. Right. Um, and, uh, uh, and then, and all the X valve parts, which is the current iteration of the gun, the X valve is comes with a level 10. So yep. it's a, it's a, uh, con it, 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 it comes with everything that's, you know, current, uh, and you don't have to buy anything extra for it. You just, and, and that's also, it, it retro fits into a 68 auto mag. Right body so you can throw it right into a 68 auto mag body pull your classic valve out it's expensive um but it does have all the features and the newest stuff of of the of the of, of what an auto mag is um I, i've i've got we're getting away from the rt name uh i've already i posted it up and it's not widely available but you know i are renaming a, the current builds that we do xm auto mags yep. and it just it just stands for x valved mechanical auto mag Perfect. So, um, and uh, we're going to go forward with that to kind of get away from the RT. Yep. So we've, we've you know, in, in, in uh, past discussions and stuff, we've talked about the, the RT has a, uh, it's not a negative connotation. It's just, it's hard for people to necessarily understand what that means. Correct. Cons considering Aragon Designs created that term and, True. And, and the technology behind it. So, um, so we're trying to get away from that because people are confused that that means the gun is some full auto runaway auto machine runaway machine in it and it's not they're they're very controllable um and so we're, we're just getting away from that designation name but other than that we've got pretty much all the parts in i hopefully this week uh, i you know i i will have time to get guns back up and available for builds online um bodies people have been looking for ule bodies those are back in they're not up on the site yet but they should be back up on the site um x valves and so forth are available and on the site so hopefully we're going to be up and running here I don't know if I'll get it all done this week, but within the next couple of weeks, we're going to have everything available. Um, and then there's tons of people that are looking for custom stuff. Yep. Uh, and that's, unfortunately, that's pretty much all me. And my time has been consumed a lot by, I don't know, Rob. Right. And, uh, everything <laughs> else. Yeah. yeah. And this event. So, we've, you know, so hopefully now that the event's done and, you know, we're getting caught up on the backlog with AGD and the parts are back in, um, I'll get back to building some more, some yep. more fun auto mags, some, you know, some custom looks and stuff. So I did a few during that whole time period. I, you know, we teased with the, some of the carbon fiber guns and stuff and, yep. and, uh, um, but, uh, and Rob was the benefactor of one of those 
guns that I built. So, yes, uh, uh, but hopefully, like I said, we'll get back within the next couple of weeks. We should be running full bore and I should be able to bring more people back in to work, which has been part of the problem. We're just, yep. we've been working with, uh, well, it's been me. <laughs> so, right. you know, so, you know, I'm going down the field, trying to build a field for a tournament and then, you know, trying to, you know, pack and ship Erga design orders and stuff. So there's only so much time in a day. Yeah, there, that's true. So even today, I mean, I was I almost forgot, you know, I mean, we we're, we're going to do the podcast and Rob called me at six 30 and he's like, you ready? And I'm like, Oh, you know, I, I better get anyway. out of here. Cause yep. I, was, I was sitting there working on Aragon design orders. So sorry for everybody. That's going to be another day late in your order. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I left early instead of staying till 9 PM at night, you know, packing orders. I, I came home to, for you, Brad, to, you know, I came home to, you know, um, I, 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 and ironically, I come home to do this uh, because I, uh, at the office, I don't, don't have a cam- I, I don't have anything with a camera at the office besides my cell phone. So, um, and uh, uh, so I had to come home to get a laptop to be able to, to do this. So. Well, I appreciate you doing that. And yeah, and absolutely. With that, uh, we can wrap it up by saying uh, again, Tim, I want to thank you for having the event, hosting the yeah. event. Um, continuing on the air gun designs tradition that I grew up, you know, watching you and knowing uh, your contributions to paintball. It's a fantastic thing. It's great for the Midwest. So I thank you for that. And, and Rob uh, and, and Rob, uh, (laughs) I'm going to say nice things. Yeah. Well, Hey, let me me say something. Thank you. Yes. Just a quick thing for Rob, so people understand our our really Rob's relationship. So, um, Rob basically came down to Fox Paintball like like the first year we ever operated. So uh, he was uh, running youth groups uh, at the time, and uh, he was bringing them down to play paintball, like when we first opened the field. So. Um, and he, he brought down several, uh, originally was bringing down several youth groups and then he himself got into paintball. But, uh, and so, so basically I've known Rob as long as I've operated the field and he's been, uh, uh, pretty, pretty much there the entire time. So, uh, I don't know of many projects at the field that Rob does not have, has not had his hands involved in. So he's, uh, he's part of the DNA of uh, a fox paintball i don't think there would you know definitely wouldn't be uh, uh a fox paintball without rob so uh he's uh he's he's part of the he i mean his his blood and sweat is is been in the been, dna of been this been field. sucked up by the 60 acres down there <laughs> i live there yeah <laughs> so uh so definitely that's where you know i mean it for people to understand a little bit where Rob more fits into the, the picture with box paintball. And, and um, he's like I said, even over the years, he's been involved with swarm. He's been involved with team Fox. He's been involved with numerous other ventures that have gone on at the paintball field. So teams and events and, you know, projects and whatever. He's, he's just, he's part of the, he's, he's part of the family down there. So. And Rob, it's one of the things one of the things that you know when you first started talking about putting on the event uh i was there in the corner with you saying how how good it was because it was somebody else doing it and (laughs) i was able to play so that that i thank you very much for all your hard work um all the dedication all the everything uh the thankless days and the craziness um uh I, you it could have happened without you they are thankless right? i was saying and those the days are thankless sometimes right i mean boy they are. but you know when we, <laughs> we start this, it's totally worth it right oh yeah i mean i guess it's not only, uh, not completely I threw I threw up a thank you right there. So. Yeah, I was going to say we definitely uh, uh, at some point we it, it is appreciated. But boy, you know, two months in 
or three months was, into that that this whole COVID thing and trying to get this stuff done. I mean, I never thought, you know, it was it was pretty uh pretty brutal. That second flood was like I think we were. I don't, you know. Rob knows how close. I mean, it, it's pretty catastrophic to have something like that happen after you've already worked two months to get ready and then have something like that happen. And you know, we were well, yeah. very very close to just walking away. So. But sometimes hey, you know. you in and have a positive attitude and let's say, just say we can do it. Let's go. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. So we, we did. <laughs> we so did. again, gentlemen, I want to thank you for taking time out today to sit and talk with me. Uh, I oh, will sure. uh, get content and stuff to Rob that I have so that we can do some kind of write up for the event as well. Cool. Um, nice. Yeah. And again, I want to encourage anyone in Illinois, the Midwest area to check out Fox paintball, great fields, great people running it. I've been going there. I wouldn't say 30. I'd say close to 30 years. Uh, <laughs> I've been going there. So uh, it, it's a great spot. And again, thank you gentlemen for joining me. Uh, it was fantastic. And if anybody wants to contact you uh, via Facebook or whatever, uh, you guys are always reachable. And uh, so am I. Yeah. So yep. again, Absolutely. thank Thanks you. Sure. Thank Thanks you, everyone. And I appreciate your time. And everybody out there, thank you for watching. Thank you.